Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. What's going on? If it's your first time checking us out, thanks for checking us out, listening to it on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, all of the places you get your podcasts, or if you're watching on YouTube, then what's going on? That's where our conversation happens. So if you want to conversate, please, please do. I'd love to see the comments. Go on YouTube and comment on this video and make sure to, of course, click the thumbs up. That means that I'm uh, uh, not making sucky content, so please do that. Um, and if you're one of the elite, one of the cool kids, one of the nation, uh, somebody who buys your supplies from me on top of watching, commenting, thumbs upping, and all that fun stuff, and sharing, uh, then what's going on? It's because of you that I get to shop at the fanciest of grocery stores. I, I got nothing. I got to think of stuff more. Uh, I'm running out of foods to say. But anyway, thanks for, uh, for always buying your supplies for me. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Every week I get a ton of you who just text me and say, hey, everything's in my cart, put the order in. It costs you nothing more. And it's like this awesome kind of benefit to me. So please, please do that if you haven't had a chance. My number direct is 862-312-2026. That is a sell. So go ahead and feel free to text or call or whatever. If you want my email, it's Josh at windowcleaningresource.com. There you go. Hopefully that's a quick enough intro for you. Um, I have to do a couple quick shout outs, of course. Uh, this week, I'm going to say what's up to, of course, Steve-O, the window cleaner. Steve-O is awesome. All those guys, if you haven't followed their YouTube channel, Fluff Daddy, Steve-O, uh, Jordy with Window Cleanse, uh, Luke the Window Cleaner, I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, all of the guys, I know I'm forgetting somebody. Who else am I forgetting? I'm sorry. But anyway, watch them. They're awesome. Uh, Kevin Fennis, what's going on, man? Aaron McEwen, Cohen, see, McCohen, that's what it is. I know I said it right before, but anyway, what's up, Aaron? And the winner, winner, chicken dinner this week, of course, is Neil Oster. What's going on, Neil? Just send me your information at joshuawindowcleaningresource.com. We'll get you out your freebies. And if you want to win, every week we pick a random winner from YouTube comments. This week he won a $50 credit to Window Cleaning Resource. So if you want to win, just comment on YouTube. Okay. Well, this week we're talking about being big. And uh, we got our buddy here, Chris here. Chris, tell us first about yourself, kind of who you are, what you do. We see the kilt in the background, but, but give, us, give us it all. Give us the details. Right on. Thanks, Josh. Well, I'm Chris Carrier from Men and Kilts. Uh, I'm the CEO, in fact. And uh, my journey to becoming the CEO is quite a long one, in fact. We started a window cleaning company about 26 years ago. That's right. I don't look that old. But, uh, I started, <laughs> you started at when you were four. <laughs> oh, it, was, it, was, it was 19. And uh, we grew a pretty substantial company called Window Works at the time. Uh, uh, we took that company to about $3 million in revenue. Uh, that was around 2009, uh, where we started to flatline with our growth. We were kind of like a rocket and then we flatlined for a couple of years. And then we thought, you know, well, what's going to take us over the edge? Uh, and then we came across men in kilts. And we were captivated, like many people are, with the kilts. And there was a great business system and great structure and great people behind the organization as well. So we partnered with them, and we became their third franchisee. We took our Calgary operation and converted it into men in kilts. And uh, as we did that... Um, uh, our organization started to grow again, and it was really on the back of the brand and the great business process and the focus on growing the company again. And over the next five years, we basically doubled the company. What took us 20 years to do prior, uh, we did in five more years with Men and Kills. So that was pretty spectacular. Yeah. And we were so impressed with the brand, the company. Uh, we bought the whole company. Now we own all of Men and Kills Franchise Services, and I get the privilege every day of working with spectacular people, running around in a kilt, and bringing smiles <laughs> to the world one kilt at a time. Nice, nice. I love, uh, okay, everybody always kind of has uh, things to say about a certain franchise that's out there, red logo, I'm not going to say, because of the way that they handle route. But as far as the franchise goes, the Men in Kilts franchise is by far the coolest. Like, it, it the reason that you have the the brand put out there, the brand that you guys run, and the way that you run that brand is absolutely. It's unlike any other brand of any companies that I've even seen. Yeah, well, thank you, Josh. I think I think that's echoed kind of across the nation. In fact, 
um, from customers, from just people in general. And when people see us, uh, it's typically, you know, they do a, a look and they, whoa, what the? <laughs> What's going on with the kilts? Yeah. And then, of course, they take pictures. We get our pictures taken every single day. They post it to social media. And then the best part is they talk about us. So when people are talking about the men in kilts, we want to make sure that they're speaking in high regard because, obviously, a brand as strong as ours is no good if you don't back it up with great service. Mm -hmm. So we do like to consider ourselves the friendly neighborhood men in kilts, and everything that we do has got to be top-notch. Yeah. So now tell us a little bit kind of about you. Uh, how many employees do you personally have? And then um, I don't know if you can share numbers and how many total franchise employees, if you even know that. What do what those numbers look like? Well, I own, uh, I currently own three men in kilts operation, Calgary, Red Deer and Edmonton. Our largest operation in Calgary has upwards of 75 people uh, during its peak season. And the smallest one in Red Deer currently only has two people. Um, so that's from a, a, under my ownership is probably around 80 to 90 people in total. And then um, across men and kilts, we've got about 150 people within the organization total. We're still very small. We're still trying to find our way. And uh, we do it on the backs of great people doing great work, like I said, because reputation, it will be our strongest competition at the end yeah. of the day. Right? Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. So you, you right now currently have kind of two businesses, one that's in a small kind of uh, infancy, even though the structure's there, the business itself is kind of in its infancy. And then you have a larger one. So of all people to kind of know about being big, getting big, staying big, but yet still being small and how the differences are, you kind of, you kind of get it all. Yeah, I do. And you know, I just wanted to mention as well. So I've actually got probably really four different businesses. So there's three men in kilts operation, Calgary, Red Deer, and Edmonton. And then there's our franchise business as well. So I really spend almost all of my time within the franchise organization. My window cleaning operations, Calgary, Red Deer, Edmonton, are all under a management and managing partners. So I don't participate a lot there. And when I do, uh, typically it's just from a guidance and a direction perspective. The team on the ground is remarkable. And they're really responsible for the growth and execution of that business process. And then my time is really with our Men and Kills Franchise Services, where we have about 20 people within that operation. So I like spending my time there because not only do I get to uh, work with my, my own operations and help them, but I get to help the operations across North America as well. Yeah, nice. Nice. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and let me know how many people you run at peak. I'd love to kind of see the gambit. But so a lot of our kind of viewers and listeners are all over the place. We have people who have a ton of employees and people who are just starting out, sole owners, owner operators, that kind of thing. There's a ton of differences between having it be all on your own. You know, every dollar you make is yours. You don't have employees. You don't have helpers. You don't have any of that stuff to going to kind of big. And I always tell people there's no real wrong way to do it. Be small, be big. However you want to do it, it's your business. You can't be wrong. But there's differences. It's not the same thing to run by yourself to then running employees. You know, there's such a, a kind of dynamic that happens that a lot of people don't even realize all the extra things. You know, for every three employees, you really need maybe one office staff or, you know, something like that where that lady who sits in the office and does all the backbone of the work itself doesn't actually make you any money. So now everybody else has to make her salary. And now when you get to 75 people, there's even more office staff and phone center people and all those things to kind of make the whole thing run that aren't getting paid, but are getting some of the money from the employees. So as a small business to kind of looking, if somebody's going big, what, what is the biggest thing that they don't, they lose focus on going from being small to big? Like what, what's like the biggest kind of challenge or headache there is from making kind of the switch? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, I think it's, um, it's all about progress. I think this is a, a comment that uh, Joshua Latimer uses progress, not perfection. And I think this, the starting point is all about where you want to go in your business. So if you want to grow a million dollar business, and you're only a one, one person individual right now, you've got to start building the building blocks to make that happen. And you will be uh, literally wearing every single hat in the organization, chief window cleaner, chief marketer, chief bookkeeper. And um, uh, 
slowly and very strategically placing those new people within the organization is is of utmost important but it's not about uh, delegation by abdication it's really about uh, bringing those people in and slowly growing them up in their role until you can really be hands off within uh, that particular part of the business um, and you know it's it's really hard to find great people oh, so yeah. uh, starting with starting with the right person is is of utmost importance we use disc profiling to make sure we've got the right people in the right seats uh, their natural characteristics and capabilities and then it's just a matter of um, I think you know loyal customers come from loyal employees and if you don't have loyal employees you're really retooling and restaffing so whatever you can do to keep those people uh, that come into your company uh, in your company for as long as you possibly can I think our longest serving employee right now is coming up on their 20th year anniversary with us and that I think that's really a testament to that individual and the character and the hard work that they've put into uh, their role. And then obviously the business itself, um, allowing that person an opportunity to grow within the organization. That person started up, up with us as a sales center agent and then they worked a little bit in, um, I think they worked a little bit in our financing team. And then uh, they've been our dispatch coordinator uh, with our Calgary operation for that entire time almost. So giving people uh, a platform to really see their um, career develop if they, if they so ch uh, choose your business as the way to get to where they want to go. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. What, what you're talking about, Latimer was talking about is that no one is ever just, well, you do if you're just kind of going for a cruise, but very seldom. Do you hop in a car and not know where you're going? You may not know exactly the path that you're going. There may be an accident or there may be a, a train or something that deviates you from the path, but you know where you're going. And that's what you're saying too is like you have to find out really kind of where your goal is because then you can focus everything on how to get there. You know, that's the part that I think people just go, I want to be big. Well, how big do you want to be? I want to be a million dollar company. Well, you said a million dollars because that's like the sexy number. That's like the, the pinnacle of I'm a big company million dollars, right? But why did you say that? Well, that's what I want to be. Well, why? You know, like people don't quite get why they're saying or why they're goaling what they think they're goaling when they're just throwing it out there. I find that that really pretty interesting. And also with staffing, you know, you allowing people to move around and be comfortable also doesn't let them get stagnant. You know, sometimes people don't want to be in the same position forever. They always have that, you know, the, the loneliest um, teller at a bank could then eventually be the manager or owner or CEO of the bank. You know, that's kind of how things go is you can always move around and hiring within like you're talking about. It's just the biggest benefit. These people know everything about you. They know your culture. They've been in it. They know it. They, they live it having them is more valuable than getting somebody new. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yep. Yeah. I so remember, I was just going to say that I remember a time when I, it, the, the, the light kind of flicked for me and I was actually on site cleaning windows and it was our grueling job. It was long. And I thought to myself, you know, what am I doing? Uh, what value am I bringing to my business right now? Cleaning these windows. And we had staff at that point and, and, and I think we we're probably a million dollar operation and in order to get to that next level, I had to really say, and this was at that moment, I said, I'm never going to clean windows by myself again. If I'm going to clean yeah. windows, I'm cleaning windows with someone so I can impart some knowledge and some inspiration and some direction so that, you know, I'm, I'm doing more than just a, a technical task within the business. There's lots of value in that, but at my stage, I was just ready to get to that next level of growth. And I think from there, I really start to, started to invest in my own personal development, um, reading books and yeah. uh, taking courses. One of the best courses that I, I've ever taken is the Dale Carnegie course. And that really helped me to think differently about people and how people are really the center part of our business. Hey, without people, especially in our business, who's gonna wear the kilts? <laughs> it's got to be awesome, dedicated and fun leaders within our business that that bring it every day. And if we can have enough of those people, then we may never clean another window again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's really also super, super smart that people always say, well, like conventions and things like that, just to start somewhere in like the learning process 
is there are millions and millions and millions of people who every year go from high school to college in some degree they think they want for the job they think they're going to get, they're never going to get. That is what they do. But we know if you own a window cleaning company, even if it's for the interim or the long run or the, the short term, whatever, you know that this is what you're doing. Learning and growing yourself, that's your college right? Uh, George uh, Aguilar said this great is that he went to every single thing he could possibly go to. And he just figured that the money he spent on flights and, and classes and, and all of that registration stuff, that was his college money. You know, this is what you're building yourself for and, and learning and getting better as yourself. Nobody ever knows everything. They just don't. So kind of continuing to grow yourself grows your business. It just makes it that much stronger and healthier. But yeah, I wasn't I wasn't fortunate enough to go to college, but uh, like you said, my college has been the window cleaning business uh, since I was 19 years old, and I've always wanted to be a business owner. And when I got into this industry, I wasn't thinking it was going to be as big as it has become for me at this point. But I can I can absolutely say that my failures along the way have cost me way more than a college education may have. But yeah, I wouldn't have yeah. other way. Yeah, yeah. It's just a different gratification though too. So being that you've done it kind of, uh, you did, it took 20 years, you said, to get to a certain point. And then it took five years to get to that same point. Is there something that it, growing too fast, is that is that real? I know my answer, but in your opinion, can you grow too fast? Yeah, absolutely you can. And, you know, I think the biggest challenge and, and a risk in growing too fast is about reputation. Um, and I've seen it actually over the last, over the last probably three years with men and kilts, we did grow a little bit too fast and our support systems were not as strong as they may have or could have been. And, um, not just the support systems, but also our selection process, all the little pieces. When you, when you have this idea of wanting to take over the world tomorrow, um, you just, so quite often you don't know what you don't know yeah, <laughs> is the <yeah>. problem. <laughs> and uh, as such, uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, slowing down, one of our values at Men and Kilts is growth, personal and professional, profitable, and the last word is planned. The planning part of, of um, growing a big business is, is so important. If you can get the planning right, it's kind of like the old, the old adage, measure twice, cut once, well, make a, make a great plan and then execute the hell out of that plan versus just kind of run as fast as you can and hopefully you'll get there. So yeah, you, you learn the, the difference. This is a stupid analogy because it's used, overused. But when you build a foundation to a building, these guys, I live outside of Charlotte and they're building uh, like four or five new skyscrapers right now, multi like, you know, 40, 50 story buildings. The foundation to these things has to cure. It has to be made a certain way because they know they're going to have 50 floors above it. No one builds a building that's two stories and then goes, you know what? Let's go up 15 more floors because the building wouldn't sustain it. The foundation isn't built for all that growth. You'd have to rip it down, start a new foundation and go that route. So like you said, building that plan and focusing on that, that's how somebody can healthily get big. I've seen it where guys have gone and, and uh, we, we actually see it way more than I'd like to kind of admit, but guys will call and they'll say, Hey, I'm a one man show right now, but uh, I'm bidding on this government contract. It's like $6 million a year and uh, I'm going to need everything. I just want a little guidance. It's like, Whoa, that you can't go from say $50,000 a year to, to a $6 million, $8 million contract. You can't do that because what happens, like you said, is you're going to find every person that, that can be, you know, clean a window or move a squeegee or just as semi-competent to make this all happen. And you're going to look awful. You're going to look like a garbage company. And then what's going to happen is all the stuff that you bought and got into and whatever to make this contract happen. Now you're failing in the contract. Now you got all this stuff and it could crush a company. Now all of a sudden you have way more expenses than you do on any new jobs because no one else is hiring you because of your reputation. You know, you can grow too fast. Everybody is so hungry that I feel like you have to take it in little bits. And I've even passed down jobs when I was newer. Um, I know I was just over the $100,000 market. I think it was me and one other guy at, at that point. And we had a contract come in and it was a nice contract. It was, it was close to a million dollar contract. 
where we were doing a hundred thousand dollars, it was like, you know, I talked to the guy, the guy was like, Hey, listen, I don't even need three bids. Like he met me. We, we went out to coffee and meetings a bunch of times and he just really kind of like me as me. And I didn't know that this is where he was going and he wanted to hand me this contract. And I said, listen, it is just outside of our scope. You know, when I get the rest of our company to that point, I would love an opportunity. But until that point, you know, you just, if you grow too fast, you destroy yourself. I think that's a really good point. If you're not quite ready to take on those big contracts, make sure you know someone who can. Make sure you're uh, hobnobbing with the industry experts in your town so that, you know, you're not that big, but maybe they are. Maybe that little relationship and that connection can help you get to that next level yourself. I remember when we first uh, joined Men in Kilts, we were the bigger organization but um, from a men and kilts perspective, and we always wanted to franchise window works, but it, you know, window works is just not all that sexy. Um, men and kilts on the, on the other hand is a very sexy brand and, and you can't forget us. Yeah. And there are really great people behind that brand. So I had to really swallow my pride and, and the brand that we had built, we had to basically say goodbye to this 20 year old brand in order to join something new. And yeah. swallowing your pride is not a bad thing at all. Um, if you want to get to the next level, you got to be around and um, be open to working with smart people. Yeah. And now the possibility is there. If you're listening, the possibility is there to grow leaps and bounds in certain number of years if you've gotten to that. So don't let me kind of hinder you on that. But the difference between you growing in 20 years, the same as you grew in five years, what differences were there in kind of, everything between the two like what what were the big differences in growing fast accelerated at five-year rate as compared to the 20 year yeah great question i would say that um in our particular situation it was the brand um, we had a really uh, loyal uh, customer base already and to transition those customers from window works over to men and kills was actually quite simple um, and then the brand really helped us take it to the next level because, you know, we were, we were window works for 20 years and not once, Josh, did I get my picture taken as a window painter? Not <laughs> even once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Becoming men and kills, we were getting our pictures taken daily and it still happens to this day and people talk about us. So the hardest thing about business quite often is getting new business. But from a men and kills perspective, it, um, it just really launched us to a new level of um, awareness. Within a year to two years, everybody and their dog knew who men and kills was. And it was quite crazy. I remember I, I called the city to, to inquire about something and I had to give them my email address. And I just remember this person's reaction when I said, oh, it's Chris at menandkills.com. And they just, they erupted over the telephone. <laughs> oh my God, the men in kilts, I love you guys. <laughs> and it's crazy because everywhere we go, this is what happens. So when I think about um, the first thing that allowed us to have that exponential growth in that five years was the brand number one. And then number two was our simplified system. So Tressa Wood was uh, instrumental in bringing um, men in kilts to a level of being franchised and she worked with 1-800-GOT-JUNK prior as their VP of operations. She saw men in kilts and said this is a franchisable business so she took everything that she knew and the, the learning from 1-800-GOT-JUNK and their great success and she poured it all into men in kilts and the simplified structure, the software, um, everything that she brought allowed us to just focus on the operation and as we were, we were focusing on the operation, the, the brand was, or the business was able to grow. So brand and then systems are what allowed us to have that exponential growth where prior, the prior 20 years was just, uh, it was uh, try, fail, try, fail, try, Let's fail. see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which a lot of people do. That, that's the most common way of growth is people go, I, I, I asked a question a few weeks back and it mind-blowing. I said, what's your USP? We talked about being unique, right? Like what's your unique selling proposition or unique selling point or what makes you the reason people buy? And I, not, I didn't have one person comment with an answer. Everybody's like, well, I, I've been around for a while. People know me, you know, or I, oh, I was the cheapest one in this bid and it's, nobody knew. So it's amazing kind of in growth, this the lack of structure sometimes that people have where they go, I want to be big. Oh, how are you going to be big? I'm going to make a million. Like, again, you, you, have to, you kind of have to know. You have to surround yourself with people that 
can help you do that too, you know? It's very interesting in growth. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you guys do a spectacular job in just educating the community and, and growing a smaller window cleaning business up. And, you know, I think uh, those little guys out there uh, drawing to WCR and, and uh, folks like Josh Latimer and uh, Brandon Vaughn, these are, these are uh, industry experts. And I think one of the keys for a small uh, independent operator right now is just to draw closer to people who've already been there and done it and gone through the struggles. You don't have to learn it all on your own uh, yeah. is, the, is the key. So hopefully they do. Yeah. So here's the question, the million dollar question, if you will, to be cliche. What what's was the worst? Was it, is it what's under the kilt? That, well, that's, that's one of them, actually. Yeah, the no peaking tagline is, is just genius. You can get on ladders with kilts. That's, that's the draw right there. It's uh, what's under the kilt. It's boots and socks, of course. <laughs> that's where, that's where we, we have to keep our business cards somewhere. I'm not going to tell you where they are, but you'll find them. But, <laughs> no, but the, million, the, the question in growth is like, what was the worst thing that you decided was awesome? Like, what was your biggest and most regretful, burned into your soul kind of mistake that you made in all of the years that you've kind of been doing this? This is before Men in Kilts, after Men in Kilts. Like, what is the number one thing that you did that was like, this is going to get us to the next level and it just failed? Like, what's your biggest failure? Oh, wow. So many to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's, that's right. And that's just it. If you're not failing, you're not growing. So don't, don't, be, don't be afraid of failure. That's for sure. That, that's probably the, one of the biggest learning lessons for anyone is just go and do it. If you fail, so what? Who cares? Keep well, going. In, life, it, in life, it's called a failure. In business, it's called learning. Absolutely. <laughs> Education at its best. Um, you know, I think probably our largest failure would be with uh, trying to diversify too much so um when when you do that so we ended up getting into uh, lawn care um this is probably 2014 so a couple of years after men and kilts everything is going spectacular we're making all kinds of money so we said oh let's bring on a new division lawn care and uh it turns out we really suck at lawn care <laughs> and not only that but um uh it impacted our reputation it drained our bank account, and uh, that was another case of trying to grow too big, too fast. So uh, we're very, very laser beam focused now on our core services, and uh, they are the things that I believe we do better than anyone in the world. Not that anyone's not going to do as good a job, but the men in kilts are pretty darn good at what they do, and I think it shows up in our reputation wherever we are. So um, that's, that's the biggest one. Nice. For me, this is, this is going to sound uh, not uh, quite to your, your level, but when I was newer, a couple of years in, I decided that for Christmas, it's like, you know, uh, after Thanksgiving kind of time, there's a big rush in people. And, and, and I have a lot of family members that I don't know. They, they're the hardest people to shop for, right? Anything they want, they buy. I just, they got everything. I said, well, what if I went and did a kiosk in our mall? Because our mall at that time was doing good. Now malls have kind of fizzled off. I said, what if I did a kiosk where I sold gift certificates for window cleaning, right? Everybody's looking for, that would be a great, oh man, I ran it over. I ran the numbers. I got everything together. This is going to be great. We ended up losing, and I was a small company at that time, but we ended up losing thousands and thousands. And I, it was close to $10,000 in um, about a month's time because I had to staff the operation. I didn't sell one gift certificate in a month and a half. And the Black Friday, which is the busiest shopping day of the year, uh, I was there by myself because I'm like, it's going to be so busy. I got another guy coming in, but I was there for like 18 hours straight or something. and didn't sell one. People just walk right by me. And that was one of the biggest learning mistakes for me. It was like the things that I think are amazing. I have to find out if people, my target market actually think are amazing because I'm wrong. Like a lot of the time, like I have to find out if somebody else wants it. And, and that's kind of, like you said, growing, like I know now, Everything I do is split test. You know, everything I do is asking people I trust that are, you know, consumers of mine. And that was my big mistake. It's, it's not quite to your level, but it's the same thing with growing, you know? Yeah, that's funny. We had the exact same experience with gift certificates with <laughs> window works. Nobody bought window works gift certificates for some reasons. Uh, reason, But um, with men in kilts, it's a little bit different because now they're buying experience. And they're sending yeah. them men in kilts. So it's a little bit better. But, uh, you know, it's not quite like Apple uh, iTunes cards uh, flying off the shelf. 
Yeah. Right, right, right. If I could just get uh, the, you know, your men in kilts gift certificates into like every Speedway or, or uh, you know, any place that sells Walmarts or whatever you kind of have, you know, then it would be something else. But it's, it's, it's a different, it's a different thing. And everybody wants to be big. And that's, and I, I don't, I say everybody, and it's not everybody, but a lot of people always say, well, how you get to that level. So with your biggest failure, which people need to also learn from your failures. Again, this is where like the Dale Carnegie thing kind of goes in is like, these people have failed doing things and learn from the mistakes. That's why people listen to this show or they go on forums or they go on the Facebook groups because they're learning from other people's mistakes as much as they are from their successes. But what was one of your greatest successes? Like something that you did and went, whoa, other than the brand change, what did you do that was like, this is a game changer. This right here for me, not to say this is going to work for somebody else, but to, for you, it was a game changer. What, what was that? Hmm. Well, I would have said the brand, so glad you yeah. took that one off my list. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take the, like, you know, the curve of the, um, the... You know, I think, uh, just kind of thinking back to that moment when I was on site cleaning windows by myself, making a hundred bucks an hour. It's like, great, making a hundred bucks an hour. That's awesome. But when I started to invest more in people, um, that was when things changed infinitely. Um, mm -hmm. And... You know, that was, that, that's what allowed me to get off the trucks. It allowed me to get to a level of profitability that I've never seen before. Um, just really tapping into what, you know, I think every single person that comes into your organization comes in with the idea that, you know, I'm hoping that this is going to be great. I hope it's going to be fun. I hope it's going to be amazing. But quite often, uh, people start and then they walk out the door, sometimes on the first day, sometimes a month later, sometimes a year later. And you got to wonder, and I always ask myself when someone leaves or if they have to be let go, how did we fail that person? Yeah. And um, from a success perspective, it's invest in yourself to become a stronger leader, not a stronger technician per se. Invest in your people to become stronger technicians. But if you can't develop and grow as a leader, you're going to uh, stifle your growth. You will never get big, in fact, because no one will want to work for you. Yeah. And all of the time and money and effort will just completely go down the drain. So it's invest as your, in yourself uh, from a leadership perspective because people want to follow uh, strong, confident leaders. They don't want to follow people who are disorganized, who don't care, and really are, are selfish and just trying to grow a big business for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. People are huge. Like when, when you think about who's carrying your business, it's all the people. If they're not strong enough to carry your business, your business falls. You know, people are one of those things where everybody, and this is years ago, because now it's a lot harder hiring, but people will always say, ah, you know, I don't like them. They did this. They're gone. They're fired. You know, well, well, you're, you're, if you had an asset, a real asset in a person, you wouldn't fire them that easy because they're an asset, you know? So it does change. Now, also because of one of your uh, businesses is so big just in itself and everybody who's listening has the problem with hiring. Hiring is just, it, it, it has changed so dramatically in the past couple of years. What's like a big tip from you on how to hire? You're talking 75 people. That's a lot of hiring to do. A lot of, um, finding people and a lot of getting people that are worth a darn like what's your tip on that yeah i think uh, one of the one of the big things and this is something that men and kills is in the process of doing right now and that is strengthening our career page you know people don't want to come to a job they're looking to start something maybe at the ground level but they really want something to grow into so we give uh, our technicians or our or sales reps over the phone, opportunities to grow within the organization from support to lead to managing partner to um, management or even franchise ownership. We have uh, several, several of our technicians who have grown right through to franchise ownership, in fact. And they're some of our strongest and more, most dedicated people because they, you know, and they get it. Yeah, they get it, and they came from nothing, right? Josh talks about uh, uh, humble beginnings, and, and you know, I, I, I share his story, a uh, quite similar story, in fact, and um, it, uh, I really have a, a, a soft spot in my heart for those people who are really just trying to find an opportunity. And 
if uh, they come to us, it's our job as leaders to provide them an opportunity to provide for their future, some hope, and their family in a big way. And if we can do that, you know, that'll be a, that'll be a, a partner for life, not an employee, a partner for life, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you think about how invested you are. An employee isn't invested, but a partner, they're invested. And being invested is if they care as much as you care, then you're building a strong person. So that, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. At Men and Kilts, our number one value is people, leaders who are awesome, dedicated, and fun. And that's really the screening tool that we use for everybody that comes into Men and Kilts. And actually, our kilts are a bit of a screener as well. If you're a person who's going to wear a kilt to work every day, you got to be <laughs> kind of awesome, dedicated, and fun. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's a natural separator of the right kind of people we're looking for. But I think um, uh, within you know, your listeners' organizations is how do we stand out? What do we have to offer? I think Brandon Vaughn talked about it. Would I want to work for my company? And yeah. the answer's got to be yes. And if it's no, well, get to work on helping your company become stronger. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I always say, would you fire you? Like, are you doing enough work? And enough value added, or would you fire yourself? Would you clone yourself or fire yourself? I like it. Well, cool. Well, hey, I appreciate it. Um, I know that uh, you're a busy, busy man. So I really do appreciate you taking some time and, and talking to us about uh, everything. And uh, being big and being little, we learned a lot today. Hey, right on. You know, if, uh, if anyone wants to reach out to me, my email address, chris at minikills.com. Uh, connect with me on Facebook or just check out minikills.com. Um, you can find me there too. I, I had a great time and thanks for taking the time, Josh. We'll Definitely, man. Soon. Anytime, anytime. Well, if you are uh, uh, in the market for any type of supplies or anything, uh, you know what time it is. We're going to be giving you a 5% off code. If you order your supplies through me again, my number direct 862 312 2026. And uh, this week, the code is KILT. So let me know that and you get 5% off your order. So, Definitely, definitely let me know. Let me put the order in. I genuinely appreciate it. Uh, make sure you're putting your comments on YouTube. We're going to pick a winner every single week. And until next week, go out there and be epic.